everyone, welcome to another video from Rail Stuff. I uh, hope you're all well. Uh, it's been a super busy month or so here with the Alexandra Palace show and, uh, and plenty of other stuff going on as well. We've taken on some new brands and uh, started to build our range a little bit more. Um, so lots and lots going on. But I thought I would spend some time talking to you today about this stuff, plaster cloth. I absolutely love this stuff for building uh, the very basis of, of your scenic areas, uh, to build the very base layer, to uh, create some relief and some shape into uh, what you do. Because if we just have completely flat areas all the time, then you really lack interest. And this stuff is fantastic. Uh, for quickly, easily, and for the most part, cheaply uh, creating some relief in your areas. I say for the most part, cheaply, and uh, this is where I get on my, my soapbox a little bit. <clears throat> the price of plaster cloth with many brands and in many retailers is ridiculous. Uh, I won't name any brands, but um, there are some out there that will charge you eight, nine, ten, even more pounds for a small roll of plaster cloth. When I set up rail stuff, one of the first things I sourced was a cheaper uh, solution for selling plaster cloth. So this stuff here is a 2.7 meter roll of plaster cloth. And instead of eight, nine, ten pounds or more, uh, you can get one of these from rail-stuff.com for £1.95. And if you order five of them, you can have that for £8. Just add five to your basket and it'll automatically do uh, the discount for you. Anyway, this is the stuff that we're going to be using today. Um, but before you get started, there's a number of things that you're going to need to, to gather up and have ready to go. Obviously, you are going to have your baseboard or area that you're working on. Um, I've just got myself a, an A4 piece of MDF that I'm just going to use as an example. But actually, this board is going to be used over the next few weeks for me to show you a few other things as well in terms of building up scenery. Uh, the next thing is you're going to need some plaster cloth. Um, so you don't need a huge amount of it, depending on the area that you're working with. Um, but uh, yeah, at the price that we're charging, you can order as much as you want. And it's not going to break the bank. Okay? Um, you are going to need a pair of scissors um, to cut the lengths of plaster cloth. You are going to need yourself a tray of water. Now, what I tend to use uh, is an old um, uh, takeaway tub ideal for doing this because one of the things that you will find is that you probably want to chuck it away afterwards because uh, you will get a build up of plaster um, in in the, the tub itself uh, in the water and yeah you can spend ages washing it out if you want but if you've just got a, a chuck away um, takeaway tub then uh, that's even better <clears throat> you are going to want um, water in that tray of course ideally have it slightly lukewarm not hot not too warm um, you can use cold cold works but uh, you just find that the the plaster um, mixes a little easier with the um, with the water slightly warm you're going to ideally need some newspaper or tissue paper or something like that if you want to build up any sort of extensive height in your layers um, we had zero newspaper at home, so I, <laughs> I took a medication prescription bag and ripped that up, so I'm going to use that. It's really not that important what you put under there, uh, and you'll then want some tape just to hold that in place. Masking tape is ideal. Uh, again, didn't have any of that, so I've grabbed some sellotape. Again, not hugely important because that's all going to be hidden under the plaster cloth anyway. Next thing you're going to need is some kind of brush. Uh, nothing too fancy, um, but uh, this will just be for smoothing things down once you've laid the plaster cloth. I would suggest having some sort of kitchen roll or toilet roll on hand. Um, and also, ideally, 
a little spray bottle with some water in. Again, not vital, but I do like to have a little spray bottle with water in. This is just an old Dettol bottle that I've um, used up and then put some water in there. So, you've also probably noticed there's a couple of little paints here. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll use those at the end. Uh, again, it's not something that you have to have, uh, but it's something that I'm going to use in this video. So first things first, I want to mark out on my board exactly where this plaster cloth is going to go. Um, now, I'm actually going to create a, a small road through here eventually. Um, so I just want to uh, mark out here, and this can be super rough. It doesn't need to be anything too fancy. Um, that's where I want the, the, the sort of main relief to be is in the corner over here and in the back corner over here and then this will be the, the road through the middle. It'll be a rough road so uh, I'm also going to use some plaster cloth on the flat here as well just to create a little bit of uh, bumpiness in there. So how do you use the plaster cloth? Well first things first, you take the cloth out of the bag, put the bag to one side if you wish, and then what you're going to need to do is actually cut this into strips. Now it depends on how you're working with this as to whether you want long thin strips or big fat wide strips. I tend to go with um, somewhere in between. Uh, obviously I want strips that fit into my tub there. So I'm just going to cut uh, a couple of strips there as an example and then I'll sort of fast forward the, uh, the, the bigger part for you. Now what you then need to do is start to prepare the relief itself. So as I said to you, ideally you want some uh, newspaper or something like that. I'm going to use these sheets here, I'm going to screw them up in a ball and then I'm going to tape them into the area where I want to build a small amount of relief. So at this point, uh, my camera managed to lose a whole load of footage so I've come back um, so that I can show you the next step because this is the, the actual really important bit is you see earlier I talked about cutting into strips well actually the easiest way to do that to fit in these pots is to cut our strips widthways so this is how you do it is you cut the strip widthways like that and then when you have the cloth you'll notice that there's two sides to it one side has got this very bobbly texture to it the other side is quite flat so what you want to do is work with the bobbly side upwards because that's the bit that's got the most plaster uh, you know actually built into the cloth now obviously uh, I, I can't um, uh, I don't have the board now to, to to lay it onto because that's already been done. But just to give you an example, I'm going to put a piece of plaster cloth on uh, this piece of tissue just so you can see how you would lay it down. And then in a moment, it will cut to me talking about how to smooth it out and how to use the brush and how to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, but in terms of how to use the plaster cloth, you take the piece of cloth, you lay it into your pot of water, just like that. Uh, you leave it for a few seconds, not too long, um, but just a few seconds to uh, allow the, the plaster to start to um, uh, loosen up. You then take it and lay that piece of plaster onto whatever surface you are working with. At that point, you can begin to smooth it with your finger, like so. Uh, before you then move on to using the brush, which is what we will cut to now. So 
So just pausing there, <clears throat> I've got the first coverage of this section here. Now this is where your brush comes really in handy because what you want to do is start to smooth this plaster down. Now of course you can do it uh, by finger uh, and you can just start to work it in like that. I like to do it with a brush, just get some water on the brush and start to use the brush to work that plaster out of the, uh, the little holes and where it's embedded into the cloth and just start to work it together so that it uh, binds together and um, starts to form a smoother surface. Particularly focus on where you've got the joins between the pieces of plaster cloth. Uh, make sure that there's a good bind between the two pieces of cloth. So I'll get on with this. So we'll come back to that piece again shortly. <clears throat> it's quite wet at the moment and we probably want it to just start to dry up a little bit before we go back in um, and uh, start to work the plaster cloth a little bit more. Um, you'll remember that I said that I wanted to do a small piece in this corner as well. So I'm going to uh, repeat the process for this corner. Now you might remember at the beginning I said that this was going to be a rough road through the middle. Um, so I'm actually going to put a base layer of plaster cloth right on the bottom just to create a little bit of roughness in that. So that's what I'm going to do now but with nothing underneath to create additional relief. Okay so we've now covered the entire board. <clears throat> at this point there is a little bit of excess water just dribbling off the sides. Um, so I'm just uh, going to give it uh, a quick mop underneath and almost spill all of the water uh, out, which I'm glad I didn't. Um, but what we're now going to do is come back with our brush and just start to smooth this off. This stuff over here is actually starting to go hard, um, which is good, but uh, we do just want to take the brush and start to work all of this in together. So that's us at this stage. Now, this has been sat just for about a minute or so. It's already starting to go off and go hard. Um, <clears throat> but this next section, you can do pretty much straight away. Because what I want to do now is just put a base color layer on it. Not, not a thick layer of paint or anything like that, but just start to dull down some of the white before uh, eventually we do some scenery work on this. So I've just got some um, acrylic paint here. I've uh, got some some Humbrol droppers. You can use any acrylic paint. I just happen to have some of this around. Um, so I'm just going to mix up a fairly dark brown colour and then uh, and then I'm going to add some water to it as well just to make it go a little bit further. Um, and also because I want the water in there just to uh, help continue to seal the plaster here. So I've made that fairly watery just in a little cup there. You can see the kind of colour it's, it's mixed up. Uh, it doesn't need to be super accurate. This is just a, a base layer just to take the, the edge off the white like I said. So I'm just using the same brush and I'll just use that to uh, brush on to take the edge off and uh, to help continue sealing uh, the plaster. So 
So at this point here, we're going to leave it now. Um, this, we've created uh, some elevation, some relief in, uh, in the board, uh, and we're gonna leave this to, to dry. What you'll find is that when the plaster dries, it will be very, very hard uh, and a very nice surface to then work with for putting grass and things like that on there. And that's exactly what we're going to do over the next few videos with this. Uh, I will be using some, um, some earth mixture and some mud texture. Uh, we'll then be using some static grass uh, and some scatter to add some colour and, and look and feel to it. Um, we will probably then experiment with some trees and foliage and adding all of that to it. Uh, this is going to be a, a sort of dirt track road through the middle, but um, the two mounds either side will be grassy and have foliage on them. So that's what we're going to work on. Um, so keep coming back every time these videos pop up because uh, we can go through the next stages of progress on this. For now, it's very basic. It's uh, a base layer for us to work with uh, over the coming weeks. But that, most importantly, is the basics of how to work with plaster cloth. Now, remember, don't spend too much on this stuff. Uh, £1.95 roll from rail-stuff.com. Don't fall into the trap of paying eight, nine, ten pounds a roll for it. It's just not worth it. It's the same stuff. Um, but uh, with that, hopefully that's given you an idea on how to use it. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, and of course, take a browse of um, our full range at rail-stuff.com. Uh, for now, I've been Adam and uh, I look forward to welcoming you back soon. Thanks for watching.